Hello, students. Welcome back to the part three session of Molecular Base of Cranthal, uh, which has been taken by Dr. Satyamurthy, sir. So in this part, we'll be discussing about the oncogenes and the tumor markers. Stay tuned. And if you have any queries or clarification, you can just type them in the comment section. And also the live chat has been streaming. So you can just type them and sir will be answering all your questions and answers at the end of the session. Thank you so much. So you can start the presentation. Yes, welcome. Welcome to my dear students and Dr. Kavya. And uh, uh, here in this session, we'll discuss about, we'll define and classify the oncogenes. We'll differentiate oncogenes and tumor propulsor genes. And uh, the P53 is the garden of human genome. We'll discuss the importance of P53 and uh, define classified tumor markers and their importance in diagnosis and prognosis of cancer. This session will be a, a bit longer than the previous two sessions. And coming to the number of oncogenes, oncogenes are sequences of DNA in a human in a human genome similar to viral oncogenes, and they are absolutely normal and they are present in almost many of the human cells and they are actually inactive and known as proto oncogenes they can be transformed into cancer causing genes only by activation they are not harmful unless they are activated c oncogenes and v oncogenes c oncogenes are referring to cellular oncogenes v are viral oncogenes the critical event is activation of oncogenes and types of genes involved in development of cancer Group 1 is proliferation in inducers. Actually, this grouping is not a, a standard group. It is, uh, I have taken this from uh, uh, Gupta textbook of biochemistry, which I thought it was easy to explain the types of uh, oncogenes. So group 1 is proliferation inducers because once they are activated, they induce proliferation and they, they cause cancer. And group 2 is proliferation inhibitors. Like these are commonly known as tumor suppressor genes. And these tumor suppressor genes, they have a, uh, inverse effect if you if you if you have tumor suppressor genes on it is good if they are off they are switched off the tumor suppression is stopping and tumor is getting started and cell death regulators bcl2 bcl2 what we have discussed in the uh, in the case of uh, bc in the case of uh, other uh, cell death regulators and group 4 is dna repair brca1 breast carcinoma genes these are breast carcinoma genes which is due to Defective DNA repair. These are the basic classif classification of oncogenes. Coming to the group 1, proliferation inducers. We will discuss only group 1 and group 2 because group 1 and group 2 are being uh, frequently asked in academic questions, but not group 2 or group, two or group 3 or 4 are not uh, commonly asked. Group 1 and group 2 are mostly important academically. So we discuss those things only. Group 1 uh, examples, Mick and Ras we have taken. Most mostly studied, uh, most uh, research was done on those two genes only. And MYC 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 gene, it encodes a transcription factor that can al that can alter transcription of many key cellular regulatory genes. Okay, this is a transcription factor coding gene. It is involved in stimulation of cell growth, cell cycle progression, and DNA replication. Many of tumors, they are having the MYC mutation. Okay, and coming to the RAS, RAS. It is a uh, Rouse sarcoma. The, the, the definition goes, it's a family of oncogenes including small G proteins. Specifically, GTPases that were initially identified as transforming genes present in murine sarcoma virus. And KRAS, HRAS, and NRAS. And NRAS is involved in neuroblastoma. And persistent activation of these genes leads to various cancers. And coming to the group 2, tumor suppressor genes. This is the important, most important part of this session. Tumor suppressor genes, they act, act by inhibiting or regulating the growth of the cell at different phases. I told you G1 checkpoint, G2 checkpoint, and M checkpoint, they are different phases. They act at different phases to stop the genes. Any abnormality in tumor suppressor genes can, can stop the tumor suppression, thereby leading to the tumor aggression or tumor progression. Okay. And coming to the P53, the P53 gene product, if you see here, it's a it's a protein having different domains, acidic domain, acidic domain, and basic domain here, transcription domain, DNA bind domain, and a, a tetramerization domain. This DNA bind domain, it the binds to the DNA to prevent the cell cycle or it goes into the apoptosis. Okay, this it can this is the product of human P53. P53 is common known as guardian of human genome. 
because 50 percent of cancers 50 percent of cancers in the human body there is a p53 mutation so p53 mutation also you have you if you go into the treatment part a p53 expressing tissue is better uh, it is uh, radio radiotherapy is more effective on a place where p53 is active a tissue with less p53 activity is not responding to radiotherapy so p53 is very important both in diagnosis and prognosis of a tumor you should remember the p53 product as having dna binding domain transcription domain acidic and basic domains okay approximately it contains 400 amino acids and i i just put it in a nutshell how it is doing p53 if the cell cycle is going if there is minor damage if it is the damage is repairable it's it is going to the division if it is not it is a heavy damage to the gene to the genome and it is stopping the cell and the cell goes into cell death now imagine somebody is destroying the p53 and there is somebody there is nobody to stop the dna repair mechanisms okay so any problem in p53 can lead the cell to go into abnormal cell cycle phase with an abnormal DNA finally lead into a cancerous state. And what are the different actions? Because uh, P53, it can be a large essay question for you, but uh, but at your undergrad level, it, it will mostly a short notes question. You should remember all these things. Any, how, how the P53 is affected by replication stress or DNA damage, oncogen activation, viral infections, hypoxia, and translation stress. All these things can cause a stress on P53 and it can give you different proteins, P21, GADD, these are different, different proteins expressed by the P53. And finally, it can lead to cell cycle arrest, DNA repair, apoptosis, angiogenesis, or autoregulation. These are different, different aspects of P53, which can be an outcome of damage to P53. Okay. If it is proper, it can repair, it can arrest the cell cycle, it can go to apoptosis. If it is improper, it can go for angiogenesis or autoregulation. Okay. Like MDM2. MDM2 and BI1, these two are appropriate proteins which are going to the carcinogenic, carcinogenic phase of the cell. So, and what points you have to remember regarding P53? Number one, gene located in the chromosome 17. Which chromosome is having the P53 gene? It is chromosome 17. And 50% of all tumors, whatever tumors you are talking about, they have a mutated p53 and what is the product of p53 it is actually given the name p53 because it is giving out a protein of uh, of approximate weight of 53 kilo daltons and it stabilizes g1 and g2 checkpoints okay g1 g2 checkpoints if the cell is abnormal it induces apoptosis it is acting through cyclin dependent kinases okay so feedback regulation sorry was spelling mistake Regulation of P53 promotes degradation of the cell. So these are the important points regarding the P53 you have to remember. And next, coming to the important part of it, how do the oncogenes differ from tumor suppressor genes? Okay, both are not similar, they have differences. Okay, this table is directly from Harper, taken from Harper. Mutation in one of the two, in oncogenes, I told you, it's like active switching on an oncogene. Okay. It is one of the two alleles, two alleles, although there, is, there are pairs, you know, as, as we already know. Okay, one allele is activated, it is sufficient to produce a oncogenic effect. But tumor suppressor genes, both genes have to be suppressed to produce, uh, both genes have to be affected to produce a oncogenic effect. And, and it is here in, in oncogenes, it is gain of function of a protein that stimulates cell growth and proliferation. It is reverse in tumor suppressor. It is loss of function of protein that inhibits cell growth and proliferation because it's suppressing the cells from growth whenever it is abnormal. And mutation of oncogenes mostly occurs in somatic cells and mostly not inherited. But remember, tumor suppressor genes can be mutated in germ cells and they can be inherited. So tumor suppressor genes are more important than an oncogene. And usually the oncogenes, they show tissue they do not show any tissue preference, but tumor suppressor genes, they show a tissue preference. Like you hear about retinoblastoma gene, mostly specified to the retina. Okay. Like these, these tumor suppressor genes are tissue specific most commonly. And these oncogenes are not tissue specific. They don't have a 
tissue preference. This can be a potential question for you, the difference between oncogenes and tumor supersargents. And that is about the genes. Now coming to the tumor markers. So what is a tumor marker? I have searched for different books, but uh, I didn't get a good definition. And this definition from Rajan Chawla's second edition is a uh, easy definition possible. It is bio. These are the biomolecules secreted by the tumor tissue or raised under the effect of a tumor of cancer growth and can be estimated in blood and body fluids. This is the best definition I can have. Is any any biomolecule? It can it need not be a protein. It need not be only a protein. It need not be only a carbohydrate. It need not be only lipid. It can be any biomolecule that is given. So are you there, sir? Uh, students, we have some technical issues. Kindly hold for another two minutes. We'll be back in a while.
So students, just uh, wait for another couple of minutes. So it is having uh, technical issues with the internet. And we'll be back in a moment. Sir, kindly try sharing your screen, sir. Hello. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. You're audible. Audible. Okay. Yeah, try sharing your screen, oh, sir. Share. Yes, ma'am. Markers for the slide, no, ma'am. Um, it is yes, sir. Yes, sir. Yes, you just can in the full screen, sir. Yes, sir. You're 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 clear, sir. Screen, sir, ma'am. Yeah, clear. you can just put it in the full screen. I'm trying, ma'am. It's not getting. Um, hello. Yes, sir. Hello. Yes, sir, is it clear now? Is it clear? Yes, sir. Yes, sir. It is clear now. Uh, sorry, students. Sorry for the inconvenience. Uh, we had a technical issue. Sir will uh, continue from the tumor markers. Sir, you can just continue the presentation. Okay. Hmm. Tumor markers. These are the biomolecules which can, which are raised in the uh, blood because of the tumor tissue. It can produce or it can make them high. Okay. So coming to the types of tumor markers. These are different types. They can be the surface antigens, endoplasmic proteins. Enzymes, hormones, anything can be tumor, which is related to the tumor. Okay, oncopetal antigens, receptors, oncoids, and products can also be tumor markers. Okay, so these are the different types of tumor markers. Now coming to the classification, chemical nature, oncopetal antigens, oncopetal protein, and carcinogenic antigen. Catecholamines, calcitonin, beta HCG. Catecholamines, it happens like. Most of the tumor cortex or medulla and glycoprotein CA125, CA1919, CA99, CA72, 4, and PSA. C is for and CA125 is most important in ovarian cancer 
where it is a prognostic and and uh, prognostic mark of a carnivore and vm a vanal mandley acid in case of again pure chromosome serot and serotonin tumors carcinoid tumor also and enzymes like dehydrogenase and alkane phosphatase these are the different tumors which tumor markers which are chemically antigens or hormones or glycoproteins so by this you can know that can any sort of biomolecule it need not be a protein or only a protein or only lipid or something else like that okay it can be a metabolite spread by the tumor tissue also so how to the clinical classification of tumor markers types of clinical classification of tumor markers tumor markers and tumor tissue markers this classification is by nih it's not in textbooks it is a different classification it can be tumor markers can be found in blood urine stools and other body fluids but a tumor tissue marker is very specific to the tissue of the tumor itself it cannot be found in blood it is it is not uh, dispersed in the blood it's only the which is a, a tumor marker come to the circulating tumor markers it's calcitonin calcitonin tumor marker of medullary calcium of thyroid and uh, CA125 a carcinoma of ovarian cancer marker which is used for the monitor of the monitor the treatment working of the cancer and so it got to my in in red urine and super spinal fluids to work and it is prognosis of multiple myeloma and chronic lymphocytic leukemia this beta 2 marker is used for the prognosis and the prognosis and the response for treatment these are the three different markers which we have discussed CA25 are the two tumor markers. Coming to the tissue markers, alpha fetal protein, and blood estimate prognosis, and estrogen, and most important markers are these things. Estrogen receptor and progesterone receptor are the breast cancer. If the, if the breast cancer is having this, it is well to the therapy and radiotherapy, chemotherapy. They, if they don't have this, the response is different. And coming to the other tumor markers, some growth factors, epidermal growth factor receptor, and PDL1, programmed ligand 1, the type of tumor marker, which is a immune checkpoint. Sir, you're done. Sir, hello. hello. Sir, am I audible, audible, ma'am? Sir, no, no. Uh, no, it's fine, sir. Am I okay? So almost we can we can do the end, ma'am. Really, anyways, circulating tumor markers are used sir, for to estimate uh, prognosis. Sir, sir sorry yes, to interrupt. Uh, you need to share oh. your screen, sir. I shared it, ma'am. Uh, please try it, sir. Share the screen. So, I don't know why it is breaking up. Now? Yes, sir. It's perfect. Hello? Please continue, sir. Okay. The, cir the circulating tumor markers are used to estimate prognosis and detect can remains after the residual disease. This is the response to treatment. And monitor whether the cancer has become resistant to it. Okay, because at one stage of the one stage of cancer, the tumor may be responded to chemotherapy, and another stage it may not respond. So that is also used by uh, defined by tumors. And coming to tissue mark, can stage and classify because staging is very important. It is based upon the invasion of the tumor into the and that is done by tissue markers and estimate prognosis and select an appropriate treatment. An advanced treatment is different from a treatment of a normal, uh, in, in a earlier stage of cancer. So for that to understand, you should, the, the tissue tumor markers are helping a lot than the circulating tumor markers. The circulating tumor markers and tissue tumor markers classification is not at, in the textbooks. You can uh, get it in only an online source and these are Differences between two types of tumor markers as tissue markers are more specifically used for the selection of treatment. What we want to do because they have different lines of therapy: radiotherapy, chemotherapy, and 
different therapies and excision surgical therapy and you you can decide better by using a tumor marker okay so these are the different we have discussed and we have discussed and we have discussed about tumor marker which are biomarkers are produced by tumor agile tumors specific and time bound hormones enzymes and non tumor antigens organs like liver gallbladder ovary specific tumor marker and circulating and tissue specific and they have diagnostic and prognostic utility and stand the session so if the interruption in between and if you have ask yes ma'am thank Hello? you sir for the uh, explain uh, beautifully sorry, explained ma'am. session and dear viewers we are uh, sorry that uh, they we had some technical issues in between uh but if you have any queries or any clarification you can just tell them in the comment section below and sir will clarify that soon after and uh, find uh, we are just uh, completing the whole session today with this and uh, sir can you please stop sharing the slides sir yes okay So, oh, students, I hope you all enjoyed the session from the part one uh, introduction, then the process of how uh, the cancer cells takes and uh, the uh, oncogenes and the tumor markers. So, kindly share our YouTube channel with the link given and the Facebook page. You can also access the recorded video, MCQs, and the announcement of all the sessions will be made at our Facebook page. And this is the schedule for tomorrow. We have two session in the session one, which is going to take place at five to six p.m., which has been taken by Dr. Swami Nathan uh, from the Medical College uh, on the topic. Exam revision. Uh, thank you so much, sir. Uh, it was a very informative session, and I hope all the students would have got uh, uh, benefited through our video. Uh, thank you for uh, sparing your time and explaining our students about the molecular basis of uh, cancer. So, any doubts? Uh, can can I look at the doubts? If they have given any doubts, they have posted, ma'am. Sure, sir. Sure, sir. Uh, till now, we don't have any queries. So, if okay. we get any other queries, we'll intimate you personally, okay. sir. Sir, we'll just uh, okay. reply after uh, after a while. And okay. thank you, students. Thank you for uh, so information informative session, sir. And uh, students, we shall see you all the next session tomorrow. So stay tuned with us. You can also give a feedback in the given feedback form in the comment section. And thank you, thank you all. Thank you so much, sir.